Spinning records, got the lights down low Soul discos, where the groovy people go Hit play, let the music flow Old school beats with the modern glow Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to the latest episode of Hidden Jewels of Soul and Disco. The sun is shining, the weather is sweet and I do hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. When we have this kind of weather, we should absolutely listen to some disco music. And today I want to introduce you to the fabulous, fantastic Donna McGee. <music> Why Donna's debut album became a cult disco record, well, we'll discuss this after some needle drops. was born in 1955 in Brooklyn, New York, and she had her musical roots in, you guessed it right, gospel music. So from a very early age on, she appeared on her grandmother's gospel choir, the Lucy Robinson Ensemble. During that time, she also decided to become a professional singer. And when she was 20 years old, she had the opportunity of a lifetime. So her first musical breakthrough was in 1975 with the Fatback Band and being featured on their album Raising Hell. That led to a lot of touring with the likes of Chaka Khan, Teddy Pendergrass, Mace featuring Frankie Beverly and many others. In 1976 she decided to leave the group to start something new. And she became part of the band Ricky Williams and Night Flight. This group was produced by Greg Carmichael and Patrick Adams. And those guys said, wow, she's a very talented singer. And they used her on almost every project they did. And believe me, they did many projects. If I would put on a pile of records this duo did in the late 70s, we wouldn't be finished in an hour, I promise you. So we had the Universal Robot Band, we had Bumblebee Unlimited, we had Freak, we had Pussy, we had so many acts these guys did. And just to show you some stuff they did, this is a, a solo project by Patrick Adams Karras. So, I can highly suggest that you check these guys out because their musical production aged very well. So she appeared on so many projects of this group. You have to imagine you sleep a couple of hours and going back to the studio, you go home, sleep and go back to the studio. So these guys were in my humble opinion an absolutely hit machine. She also was featured on Bumblebee's biggest hit, I'm a love. In 1977, Greg Carmichael approached her and said, Donna, wouldn't you want to do a solo record? And Donna said, let's go for it. So she signed with Red Greg, which was an imprint done by Greg Carmichael. And together they created in 1978, Make It Last Forever. And here it is in all of its 70s glory. For me, this is one of the most perfect disco records ever. It only features five songs. They have a, there are very long versions of that included in this, and it sounds perfectly. She also did a reworked version from I'm a Love Bug, which she had recorded previously. So yeah, she put her own touch to it. And also the voices from the Bumblebee project were speed up to give them this Bumblebee sound. So on this version, you hear it in a normal speed with her touch to it. There's also some moaning on this recording. So Donna described the situation in recording these that in the studio, they had to turn off all the lights 
and everybody had to get out of the studio except for the producer and the sound engineer. And it was all done in one take and it adds really some spicy flavor to this album. There was a single release from this album, Do As I Do and Mr. Blind Man, but the real hit back in the day was It Ain't No Big Thing. It was a club classic all over the world. Make It Last Forever became later on a vocal house anthem. It's been sampled so many times on so many tracks that DJ just love it. If you want to have an original copy of this record and you know what's coming now, you have to consider at least between 150 and 250 euros if, or dollar if you find one. It became a so sought after record that it's really difficult to find. For me, it took eight years to finally find a copy in the wild. That's because, like I said, Earlier, DJs are loving to sample from that album, so everybody, every DJ is kind of trying to get a hold of this record and that really, really increased the demand for it. If you want to have that record on vinyl, don't worry. There are many affordable reissues out there and you can have it if you want or if you don't find an original copy. When her contract ended with Carmichael, and Adams. She changed label and went to Obaga Records where she released in 1981 You Should Have Told Me. She also recorded another track for that label but that was unfortunately never released. She said that some difficulties, political things happened and therefore she couldn't continue working for the label. After that, she moved to the South, raised a family, but continued working in the music business, like doing backing vocals for the likes of Salt and Pepper or Big Daddy Kane, just to name a few. Nowadays, she is appearing, she's working on the new album, and finally she gets the credit she deserves for all the work she did in the 70s, especially for her solo work, but also for being a fantastic singer. Therefore, I would highly suggest that you check out Donna's music and also check out Make It Last Forever. If you're looking for a great dance record, great disco record, this is your way to go. If you liked this episode, I would highly suggest you check out the playlist which is appearing up here. And all I can say is stay healthy, stay safe, listen to good music, and I catch you on the next one.